Hi everyone and welcome to the MA Healthcare Practice or MSc Advanced Clinical Practice, the three modules I'll be running for you. I didn't get a chance to speak to everyone on our induction day, so here's a really brief video uh, to, to get you all on the same page in relation to the modules you're going to be doing. In January of 2023, we've got the brand new MSc Interprofessional Healthcare Simulation starting, so they'll be joining us as well. So that's why you'll see loads of code numbers for the different modules. Basically, there are three modules I run um, pertaining to the MA and to uh, the MSc Advanced Clinical Practice. And the first one that you'll all be required to do is the Inquiry Skills for Research in Health and care practice. So if you're doing the MA, it's called OMED 1356. If you're doing the MSc um, ACP, it's the 1384. And if you're doing the interprofessional simulation, it's 1411, okay? And in some of you, if you've already done the research methods course, you can opt to do um, another one, which is called Resi 1159. And that's uh, the dynamics of dissemination publishing, promoting and performing your studies. And then you all come back together again for your final project and dissertation. So on the MA, it's OMED 1357. On the MSc ACP, it's OMED 1386. And on the MSc simulation, it's 1413. Okay, don't panic about those. The advanced clinical practice students all have to make sure that they're addressing uh, um, four key pillars of advanced clinical practice right throughout their program. So when it comes time to doing the research methods course and then your project and dissertation, although you may be focusing more on one element than the others, it's still really good for you to be able to draw on all four of these to show how it relates to your advanced clinical practice. Okay, and these are the four pillars of advanced clinical practice. Of course, for those of you doing the MA or the MA MSc simulation, uh, it wouldn't harm you to, to, to make reference to these within your projects as well, because you're all working across health and social care fields. So the first one is the inquiry skills for research. This normally runs in September term for most of you, but for the simulation practice, you'll be doing it in January and May terms across those two terms. Okay, but for the others, you do it all in September and you'll have completed it by the first week of January. Okay, so this is going to be looking at research methods, but not just research methods in the abstract. It's research methods focused on the type of project you want to do. So you'll have loads of opportunities to work out your ideas and to know exactly how you want to go on with your projects once you finish this particular model uh, module. So that's going to prepare you for it. And the assignment for this is is a 15 minute conference style presentation that you do online here in MS Teams. You do it, there are two different dates given. You can either choose to do it late November or right at the beginning of January. Some people may be away after the Christmas and New Year break, so you might want to do it in November, okay? And because there are so many of you, we need to split it 50-50. So some of you will do it earlier, some later. You do a 15 minute presentation based on your research proposal. So when people sign up to do master's degrees or doctorates, they, they usually have to write some form of uh, uh, research proposal. But rather than you just write the form and hand it in as an assignment, we're asking you to perform it. So you'll be doing this um, uh, um, as a presentation to the rest of us on the course, telling us what you're proposing to do for your project. Okay, so that's your assignment. There's no written work to hand in. It's it's only what you do for your presentation. So you may be using PowerPoint, Prezi, Mentimeter, uh, whatever you're going to be using. That's how you do it exactly as if you're going to a professional conference and you have 15 minutes for that presentation. For those of you who have already done Research Methods course, you will then um, uh, choose this other compulsory option. So it's compulsory to do a 20 credit course. So you either do the Research Methods or if you've already done that, especially here at Greenwich with us, then you would do this other course, Resi 1159. That's the dynamics of dissemination. And that's spread out usually about once a month, right across the academic year. 
and that's going to um, uh, make you aware of different ways of boosting your academic citizenship to get known in various professional circles. So whether that's writing for publication, speaking at conferences, disseminating through creative digital media um, or social media, it's ways for you to get your level seven knowledge out there to the wider world. Okay, so that's the dynamics of dissemination. And the final module then that you all come together on, that's the, um, the project and your 10,000 word dissertation. So you've got a choice of three projects and you've got the whole of your research methods course to work out which one is going to suit you best. So you might either do an audit or service evaluation and the difference between the two is that an audit is when you're mapping your service up against um, a national guideline. So here in the UK, for example, it may be a NICE guideline and you're mapping your service up against that. Okay, so that's called an audit. If no such national guideline exists, then you're just exploring your service to see what's being provided. So that's called a service evaluation. Okay, that's the one type of project. The other one is a change management project. So you might think to yourself, well, I know where my service is. I don't need to evaluate it. I know through experience that we could be doing things differently. Or I know through reading what other places are doing that there are better ways of providing our service. Or maybe it's a new service that you want to look at uh, um, uh, integrating in, into your current professional practice. So what you could do here is a work-based change management project. So you look at different theories on change management, find the best one that suits you and your needs, or maybe it's going to be a mix and match of a few elements of different change management theories. And what you do is actually um, implement some change and hopefully there's time to evaluate it as well. So service evaluation may be a tiny bit of this, just to map out where you are at the moment, but the main emphasis is on making a change to get your service from here where it was over to somewhere else. Now, sometimes there may be even resistance to this, maybe from authorities or members, of, other members of staff. So with lots of change management theories, they get you to explore how to win over the various constituents, the various groups of people that you're gonna to have to be working with. And that might even be down to those who give you access, the gatekeepers, or those who make decisions. So you need to look at how am I gonna win them over and make sure this project really works. And the third type of project is um, an extended literature review. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I want to carry my work on and maybe do doctoral studies afterwards. All of these projects would help because whatever you're doing, however you're mapping um, the current state of play, that might then give you more ideas on how to take this further with doctoral studies. So all of these three projects would really help you. But sometimes people find that by doing a literature review, they're seeing what literature has actually been done on a particular topic area, so they then know when to take or how to take that forward with doctoral studies. Okay, so all three of them would work really well there. So you uh, take a few months to do this, if you're on the September start, then it's normally going to end in May or July, and we'll discuss that on the courses. And if you're on the Interprofessional Simulation uh, MSc, your program starts in, in January and ends the following January. Okay, so different start dates. And that's why you'll notice on the main dissertation course, there's one whole block there called row, row, roll on and roll off. So it's just me explaining on there what to do when we've got so many different start dates and so many different end dates, how to access the materials, how to work with them right across your program at whichever stage you're actually joining us. Okay, and that's it. Um, uh, right at the end here, so the final a bit of icing on the cake is the motto that we, we like using at the University of Greenwich and that motto is you said we did so if when you're doing any of your studies you think well I'm not understanding this or I wish we had more on something else please don't wait until the end of your module and then to give a poor evaluation saying it didn't fulfill your needs you must mention it up front okay so either mention it to me personally or online there's, there's one form sending messages to me as the module leader or you may say it in any of the forums.
websites on there. If there's still in all you need, please be upfront and say it as soon as you need it. And then it's up to us to respond and try to um, address um, what it is that you're talking about. There's a little, little book uh, that I read a few years ago called Teaching Life Books by the Infant Beings. And you can to refer to this on a few occasions. But there's one little quote in there that I've memorized that is so meaningful. studies with us and congratulations for um, enrolling and getting onto the program in the first place. Thanks a lot and bye bye.